everyone, Tech with Fru, welcome to the channel. Today, I'm going to show you how to interact with OpenAI GPT-3 from Python. So OpenAI is a very powerful company and they specialize on building language models that people can interact with. And I've done previous demonstrations on how you can interact with OpenAI GPT-3 uh, using uh, the browser. So uh, in my previous demonstrations and the link to some of my previous videos is going to be in the description below. Uh, you can go into the OpenAI platform using the UI, which is a web browser, and interact with the language model by just clicking around in the UI. So for example, uh, let's say we are in the browser, I can go to Playground, um, and this is what a lot of people would use for just getting a feel for what it does. You can go into the Playground, put in any question in here, put in uh, the call is a prompt. Uh, you can put in the prompt, and that prompt is going to give you an answer, just from a recap of what we did. So we can say, what is uh, global warming? Just a very simple prompt for us. And of course, you have to choose your engine. So typically, I choose the DaVinci uh, engine because it can write for you. It can write uh, using uh, the, the language model and essay for you. So just a quick recap here. Uh, you submit this. And what we get is it's doing a really good job. It's explaining to us uh, a little bit of a warning there what open what uh, this topic is and if I really wanted to I can go ahead and keep writing uh, to understand you know by simply asking the question what is global warming this is writing an essay for me or giving me more detailed response that is what the language model is now we can do this using the UI that's not really a, a challenge but what I wanted to do here today is to show you how extremely easy so easy that even a high school student or even a greater a student in, in, in grade school should be able to do it using uh, using basic Python. So we can do it in 10 lines of Python code or even less. So that said, let's uh, start. The very first thing that we need is the OpenAI library for Python. And it's very simple for us to get that into Python here. So we're going to go ahead and import OpenAI. That's basically all we need uh, from a Python perspective. So import open AI and we should be good to go. Let me zoom in here for a second so we can actually see my screen. Um, minimize this to the side so we can see the screen. So import open AI. Now you might say, well, there is a problem here because it's not recognizing this particular module, this particular package. So depending again on the IDE that you're using, go ahead, install open AI. Uh, package so the beauty of PyCharm is you can see it running below here it's going out to the package manager it's downloading the package and it's gonna make it available for me so now once this is successful I can interact with OpenAI using that package so it says here package uh, installed successful I get a notification so now I should have OpenAI available for me to use. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the magic of pasting and I'm going to paste a very simple function that I wrote in Python uh, that's going to call out to this open AI package and it's going to be able to interact with that package. So very simple. I'm going to paste it. I'm going to walk us through what this is doing. It's very, very simple. I could optimize this, uh, but there are a couple of things I want to call out from here. So I'm just defining a simple uh, package uh, function and calling a GPT-3, it's going to take an input parameter. And this input parameter will be my prompt. It's going to be the prompt I'm sending to GPT-3. So very similar to what we're doing here by just typing what is up, what is uh, global warming. Well, we're going to do the same thing by passing that text into this, into, this, into this function. Now, that function has to do something to it. The thing that it has to do uh, is to interact with OpenAI. And for it to interact with OpenAI, we need the OpenAI key to talk to any API. You need the key. So in here, I'm defining a, a key, OpenAI key, and I'm passing in the value for the OpenAI key. Now, where is this value coming from? The value is coming from the UI. So if you go back to the UI and you want to grab your own OpenAI key, just basically go to your profile picture on the top left side there. Uh, uh, click on view or uh, AI uh, keys or API keys and it's going to bring you to the screen and this is where you see your API keys. Now, depending on your level, if you're a paid member or if you're still on the free tier, you might have to pay for using this key. So just something to be, to be aware of. And if you want to see where you are, click on billing. You can see all that information. I'm assuming 
that you have the key and you have the right to use it. If you want to rotate your key, just go ahead and rotate that key. But uh, click reveal, copy this key. That's what we need. So going back into the UI, we're going to paste that key here. Um, and you can always rotate this key. In the real world, you wouldn't be hard encoding keys like this. You would maybe pass it from environment variables or from a more secure uh, approach. But I'm just doing a demonstration here. So just bear with me for not writing code that is secure. Now, we have our variable. It holds a key. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create a response. And this response is going to be what comes back when we call OpenAI. And so we're going to say OpenAI dot completion dot create so we're going to create an, an, an object to interact with that open ai and we're going to specify the engine it's going to take a couple of parameters here number one is what engine are we using so here i'm going to use the davinci uh, davinci uh, instruct beta i like it that's to me that's a favorite engine um, and if you're not sure what engine we're dealing with just go back to playground this is the engine we're working with there's ada there is babish there is curie Curie Instruct Beta, DaVinci, DaVinci Instruct Beta. So pick your favorite engine. To me, I always use uh, DaVinci Instruct because that's meant to write summaries for you. Uh, DaVinci just simply answers questions, like one of questions. So pick your right in the engine. So DaVinci Instruct Beta is what we're using. And what you notice is all these other parameters that are available out here, these knobs and dials that you can move, those are parameters you can configure to programmatically. So if I come in here, you can see my engine has been specified. Uh, I'm going to pass in my prompt text, which is what is coming in from a parameter. And I'm going to set the temperature, the, the max tokens, uh, and a few other things, right? And those things are basically what you set up here. So the temperature is how deterministic should your response be. So the more, the higher your temperature, the more precise, the more, the less precise it is, the lower, the more broad it is. I, I hope I'm saying that correctly. But just play around with temperature. You kind of get a feel for what is very apparent when your temperature changes and the response you get. So for me, I kind of like to keep it at seven. That's my sweet spot for you. You might want to take it to 10 or put it at one. It really depends on your use case and how you use the platform. Now, our temperature is set. Our tokens are all set. Um, max token here is really like a guardrail. So you don't want to put too many tokens. Otherwise, you might send a rogue query or a rogue request and consume all your tokens because GPT-3 charges by tokens. So if you run out of tokens, you're going to have to pay for those tokens. Now, once we, we set our prompt uh, in here uh, to, to, to this um, uh, invoking OpenAI, we're going to get a response back. We're going to get a response. So very similar to if you come in here and you type something and you submit, you're going to get a response back, which is going to be a payload. It's going to be a text. And we want to do something with that very easy again. So what we're going to do here is I'm just going to take that response, uh, go in and split it out. Not really doing a lot of things. I'm going to take the first one, split it out, and then I can print it on the, on the screen. So very, very basic uh, stuff. And then I'm just going to return that text to uh, to to the screen. So that is the function that we've created. But for us to actually run this, or run this code, we're going to have to call the function. If you're familiar with Python, you're going to actually have to call the function. So let's just write a very simple prompt in here to call that function. So what I'm going to say, give it is uh, write a new variable here called query. And in my query, I'm going to ask the question, what is global warming? All right. So now that is a query I want to send to GPT-3 programmatically. Again, you might have, say, a UI or a web app and someone sends in a text and you take that text. This becomes your query. You send it to GPT-3. It gives you a response. You take it, format it, display on your UI. So that could be your use case. But here, we're keeping it basic, one-on-one -on -one, um, interaction with GPT-3. So that's my query. Now I'm going to pass this query to, to this function so I can actually get a result. So let's go ahead and actually say response because we're going to get a response back. It's going to be now we can call GPT-3 and then we pass it our query. So the query that we've sent here. Again, I just like to use variables. I, I can just have written this directly in there, but it's a little bit better when you use variables. OK, and then once we get our response back, let's actually go ahead and print uh, response to screen. Nothing too fancy. Um, so again, very, very basic. So we'll, we've defined our function here that actually talks to GPT-3 API. Uh, it has an input 
and once we pass in that input we're gonna take the result print it to screen super basic let's go ahead i think before i was running text to speech in my previous demonstration so let's go ahead run this instead of text to speech let's run the gpt3 application so it did come and back with the response you can see it printed out to standard io here uh, what is uh, global warming and here is the response i think i'm printing two times i'm printing uh, up here and i'm also printing down here so let's go ahead and remove that print so we don't have that print statement up there so we can print just one time and just print this response in a little bit of a formatted approach so you can see what is global warming and global effect this is my response if i wanted to i can format this put this in a ui build like a q a kind of application where someone's gonna give me a question i take that behind the scenes call this wrapper send it to gpt3 take the results bring it back format it and you can have your own ai powered application with just how many lines of code 20 lines of code not even 20 i think it's less than 20 it's about 10 lines of code if you really count it because i can put all of this in one line so this is how powerful it is and just to show you that this is live uh, we can change uh the query here and and actually put any query that we want right so let's say what is let's say what is dark matter right if for those of you that like physics for example what is dark matter and i submit the query um to gpt3 i'm a student i want to learn about dark matter and gpt3 is giving me an answer right here dark matter is a type of matter that's invisible to human eye blah 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 so just imagine students you can create your own google just like that in very simple line of code it's extremely easy it's extremely powerful i know this is really basic code but guys hopefully this can give you a starting point uh, for you to start interacting with gpt3 uh, uh, again just to bring this back home what we've seen here is how easy it is extremely easy to build an application uh, on top of gpt3 the language model uh, to do language kind of task you can use the ui which we're seeing here or you can use the code i know a lot of you watching these videos on this channel you are coders you like to write code so this should give you a good way for you to do that basically by writing code so hopefully this was helpful if you've been kind of curious around playing with it uh, the way we've done it here in python would be very similar to the way you would do it in java i can do it in java if anybody wants that so hopefully this was helpful to you again thanks for watching uh, this is through tech with through stay tuned for more videos that we make on this channel i'll see you in the next video